It was the third game of the season for the McKinney IC football teams, and two of the three teams came home with the W. Hello and welcome to Sports Talk. I'm your host, Tyler Sloan. The McKinney Lions fought hard for four quarters and were rewarded with a 20 to 10 win over Irving Nimitz. Coach Jeff Smith is in studio to explain how his team held strong. Boyd desperately needed a spark after an 0-2 start to the season, and boy did they get one against Garland. Coach Don Drake joins us with highlights of the blowout victory. It's a bye week for upcoming for the North Bulldogs in football, so we will talk about their game with Frisco Centennial on next week's episode. It's going to be a fun show, so stick around because this is Sports Talk. Lions were in a dogfight against Irving Nimitz last week. They came out with a 20 to 10 victory. I'm joined by their head coach Jeff Smith and coach. It was a tight game throughout. You were trailing by three at the half. What really made the difference in the end in that second half? Well, our kids kind of settled down a little bit and um, you know started executing. I felt like the first half we hurt ourselves um, just on some you know errors you know maybe by alignment or by assignment, but we um, we weren't very sharp in a lot of areas in the first half and, and at halftime we talked about those things and you know kids uh, really rose up and played better the second half and, and um, you know we were able to get the win. We're going to take a look at the highlights now of that victory over Irving Nimitz. It started out in this game Irving Nimitz took a two to nothing lead off of a safety but then your team started to settle down played some good sound defense whole night long. Yeah you know just the the safety was just a, a snap that went too high and, and so being off two to zero and then kicking the ball to them, our defense, you know, had to kind of go out and defend pretty quick and I felt like the defense rose up and did a good job, um, you know, did a, did a good job in both halves, you know, just uh, stopping them from scoring. I know um, they, we gave up some yards, but overall I thought, you know, we kept them out of the end zone uh, for the most part. Here's your quarterback, Brian Sutter throwing a screen pass, and he had a, a fishing game, six of eight, not really called on to throw a whole lot. You were really trying to work the game on the ground. Yeah, you know, uh, six of eight's great. Um, you know, um, good numbers there. You know, we like to throw the ball a little bit more uh, than that um, as we have in the past, but uh, we felt like we could run the ball as well, and, and the, the ground game was working, um, and uh, so we kind of stuck with that, and, um, you know, it worked out for us. So we just saw he took a 7-2 lead. Tommy Candela, 32-yard touchdown run, and it's a good thing to have Tommy back on the field. It is. You know, he had a great game, had a, you know, a little over 120 yards, and, and um, you know, it's just good to have him back in the backfield. Defensively, you're able to force a few turnovers on Irving Nimitz, and that really helped keep you in this game with a few first-half struggles on offense. In the third quarter, Dalen Willis getting a big touchdown run for you. Yeah, again, Dalen came back this week as well and, and um, you know, uh, just did a great job execute, executing the, uh, the fly sweep there and, and getting the corner. That went for 64 yards. You trailed 10-7 to at the half. They got a late touchdown as time expired. You fell on the two-point conversion, so it's 13-10. to and, and once again, you're going to get an interception off of their quarterback to help give you the ball back going into the fourth quarter, and that sets up Tyree Johnson for what ends up being the, the final score of the game. Yeah, it was good to see John Trell uh, make that play. You know, he made two interceptions the week before, uh, which were big, and then this week he had one that really kind of helped, helped, you know, helped us on defense, get the ball back to the offense, and we were. This is the drive where we went down and, and actually punched it in. Um, ball kind of comes out here at the end, but uh, he was kind of already across the plane and had secured it. But uh, yeah, it was good to get that in the end zone to kind of make it a, uh, you know, at least a two-score game, two-possession game at that time, and then. Defense held them, and, and uh, we were able to, to finish it off. And talk about John Trevor real quick. He's averaging an interception a game so far. He's been all over the field. Why is he such a good ball hawk? Uh, he just, you know, he's got a lot of experience. You know, he's played for us for three years, and, and uh, you know, he, he's a very coachable young man. He listens really well and, and, and uh, knows. He's like having a coach out there. He's smart. He's not just a smart one, you know, on the field. He's, he's a really good student, you know, and, and he studies. And uh, so it, it, 
he, but he's got some natural instincts, and um, you know he he sees things pretty well and breaks on the ball well, and and uh, we sure needed him, and uh, we're going to continue to need him. What exactly was Irving <laughs> Nimitz' game plan on offense that you saw, and how defensively did you counter that? Well, you know they um, they are very methodical. Uh, they don't like to go at a fast pace. They like to control the clock, keep the ball away from the offense, and they were able to do that the first half. Um, <clears throat> you know, I know our offense uh, did. You know, uh, we were able to score one in the first half, but we'd like to have scored more. And uh, you know, we just they didn't. You know, have too many opportunities as well. You know, I think uh, they had the ball for 39 plays. You know, in the first half, which is which is a lot. And uh, when you look at the time of possession, that uh, keeps the ball out of our offense's hands. Uh, we only held them to, to 10 points, but still they had the ball a lot. And so um, there's a few opportunities we had a chance to get off the field and we didn't, you know, had a chance to, to get the ball back. So, um, you know, that, that was kind of their game plan, to slow the game down, to, to chew the clock, to keep the ball away from us, uh, and uh, hopefully to, to, uh, to beat us in that way. And, and fortunately, we were able to, to come through the second half. Offensively, you went up against a defense that has a lot of size. They have brother linebackers that, that are tough to deal with. They're good athletes. You're able to run the ball, though, pretty effectively. Tommy Candela had himself 15 carries for 124 yards in the touchdown. Dalen Willis on the fly sweep with a touchdown. Taylor knew Oliver also ran the ball very well. Yeah, you know, they, we knew that defensively they were probably a little better on, you know, on that side of the ball. Um, they're very big, very physical up front in their 3-4 defense, and their, their outside backers are, are, are twin brothers, and they're, they're pretty good, uh, pretty long-rangey kids. And so, um, you know, that was going to be kind of where a lot of it was decided was up front. Um, and um, our kids did a good job hanging in there and battling um, and, uh, you know, really trying to run the football. And we threw the ball efficiently, um, you know. Um, we just had one interception, but I thought I thought we threw the ball pretty efficiently. You know, six of eight, as you had said earlier. So, uh, you know, good job. So, um, you know, we've got to continue to to improve. You know, but I, I think Irving Nimitz, they played Lamar the week before, who's a who's a great program, and, and you know, Lamar beat them 21-3. So, people have had a hard time moving the ball on them a little bit. They're they're a good defense. He's doing a really good job over there. Uh, coaching those kids. And you know, Lamar, a team that usually averages way more than 21 points mm -hmm. going into a game. You have to be pleased winning the turnover battle 3-1 to one and also only committing one penalty in the entire game in, for 10 yards. You know, it's um, the turnover ratio is big. You, you look at that, the first week we were the negative side of that. You know, we had three turnovers and they had zero. Uh, and so, um, and we lost the game, you know, and it came down to just some plays. and. The last couple of weeks we were able to win and the turnover ratio was in our favor. So I, I think that a lot of that goes hand in hand. It's hard to overcome turnovers and, and our kids have done a good job, you know, really covering up the ball, protecting the ball, paying attention to those things, making good decisions. Uh, and our defense has done a good job going in there purposefully trying to strip it and, and trying to create some things. And so that's that's a good thing. The turn, you know, the, the penalties, uh, the lack of penalties is a good thing, obviously. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we want our kids to play clean and play smart, um, but still be aggressive. And, and um, you know, all three games we've been, I believe, under five penalties. And so we want to continue that. You know, that's, that's, that's where we want to be. Friday night you have a 7.30 kickoff at home against North Garland, a team that is 0-3 on the season, a team that really in recent years they, they've struggled <laughs> to really have the athletes to consistently win ball games. They've had a lot of struggles for their team. So this is a game still for your team. You don't want them to relax going into. No, and, and you know, Coach Castillo does a really good job. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, he was in the McKinney District for a little while and has been around and is a good coach. This is his second year. And they've got great athletes. Uh, I think I think the thing that they run into, and we run into this at times, is just depth and playing kids both sides of the ball and, and you know, just trying to um, stay healthy, you know, all those kind of things. And, and uh, we all as coaches worry about those things and are monitoring those things, uh, especially, um, you know, um, 4As and, and small 5A schools we do. Uh, but, um, you know, he does a really good job. And in the skill positions, he's got good athletes that have made good plays. Uh, it just hasn't, you know, happened for them the first three weeks. But they're a good team and, and uh, you know, I said this last week, uh, our focus this week is just on the McKinney lines. We've got to get better. And uh, we, um, we have a lot of areas that we feel that we need to improve in. And our kids see those and saw them on Friday night against Nimitz and said, if we want to win district ball games, we've got to get better. And um, 
they're committed to that, and I think it's going to be a great week of practice. And we need to play uh, to our ability this Friday night against North Garland and hopefully come out with a win. Before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about one of the current hot topics in football, and that's targeting. I've seen it in a couple of high school games already this year. The penalty either called or maybe should have been called but, but not thrown. It, it's tough, such a tough penalty. We saw Saturday in the big college football game, Alabama and A&M, an Alabama player had initially had the penalty called against him and was ejected from the game. They reviewed it. Luckily, in college football, they can review it. They can in high school. Right. He was let back in the game. But that one penalty can have such a big effect on the entire game. How difficult is it to, to coach your defensive players to know how to properly tackle in those situations? Well, you know, it, it, a lot of it takes care of itself with just good tackling, form tackling that we, we, we try to teach. And, um, you know, uh, every day, you know, just with our face up and, um, you know, um, keeping our head up and not leading with the crown. Obviously, bringing an arm or a forearm on the tackle, you know, to the head area is, is pretty obvious a little and pretty more noticeable. Obvious, yeah. and, you know, we, we want to we we wrap up with our arms around the defender, not bring a, a forearm. And so, we, you know, we teach to fit and wrap and, and then hopefully strip the ball. But, you know, we want to keep our head up and, you know, we believe if we're teaching those right fundamentals, then, then you know, we're going to keep ourselves out of those situations. Uh, we want our kids to be aggressive. There's no doubt. We want to we uh, run to the football and, and, and tackle aggressively. But, you know, obviously we want, we want everybody to stay in the game. We want to keep it clean uh, and those types of things. And so I, I believe the way that we're teaching tackling, it, a lot of it will take care of itself. And it certainly has so far. As, as we've said, not a very penalized team. Your defense has done a good job and offensively staying sound with the fundamentals. Coach, good luck next week against North Garland. Thanks very much. Kenny Lyons, 2-1 and one on the season, the only McKinney ISD team currently with a winning record on the year.